CBS presents this program in color. From Television City in Hollywood, it's Tattletale! Welcome to the game of celebrity gossip, Tattletale! And here's the star of Tattletales, Bert Conley! Hello, everybody. Thank you. Welcome to Tattletales. Nice to be with you. Nice to be with you here in the audience, too. As you can see, our studio audience is divided into three sections, the red, the yellow, and the blue, each rooting for one of our celebrity couples. And, of course, every time one of our celebrities wins money, you here in the studio get it. So let's go, shall we? Here the people are going to win the money for you today. For the blue section, Mr. Steve Lawrence and his wife, Edie Gourmet. Steve and Edie. <laughs> Winning money for the yellow section, Mr. Dick Martin and his wife, Dolly Yay! Martin. Yay! And winning money for the red sex of Mr. John Clark and his wife, Lynn Redgrave. Yay! Here we go. Ladies, I can see you all. Can you hear me clearly? Sure. Yes. All right, you look really cute. Here we go. First question is for you. It's directed to the ladies, gentlemen. You must remember that. It's worth $150 to your rooting sections. Ladies, at a Washington, D.C. party, you're introduced to two women. One is a congresswoman. The other is a famous Washington call girl. <laughs> Which one would you be more interested in talking to? The congresswoman or the call girl? Ah. Uh. Off you go, ladies. Good question. That's the way to begin a game, isn't it? Steve, which lady would she more, be more interested in talking to? Well, the, there are some political representatives that uh, represent both groups. Yeah. That's true, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I tell you, Edie and I lived in Washington for, for two years while I, I was in the service. I was stationed down in uh, Virginia. And we did have the occasion to, uh, to meet a lot of uh, political people. And, and it's very stimulating. I, I think that uh, over the years, because of the nature of the business that we're in, I think that uh, Edie would uh, much rather meet a congresswoman. You She's didn't... very outspoken, as a matter of fact. Yes. Edie is. You, has she, uh, to your knowledge, ever spoken to a, a call girl? Uh, she's called congresswomen. Uh, <laughs> but never called a... Yes, I... Probably. She'd have no reason to call a call girl. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I mean, she might send him a get well card, yeah. you know. Uh, you know, just, you'll be all right, just stay out of bed for two weeks or something. <laughs> I, I think she would want to, to talk, talk to the congresswoman because she's, think she's a, a political activist in yes. a sense. Yes. Okay, here she here's comes. <laughs> Edie, yes. who would you rather talk to? Who I would rather talk yes, to. Yes, the question is for you. Well, there's no question uh, that um, it would be very interesting talking to a call girl, especially in what That was not it. That was not my answer. Okay. It would be more interesting talking to a call girl, although what could possibly be new? Only the faces change. Whereas, <laughs> whereas, it might be more interesting talking to a congresswoman, since there are not too many congresswomen around mm -hmm. and um, so far the blue the blue section's going crazy because they don't know which way I you're going to go I well I personally would talk to the congresswoman you're right that's what Steve said yeah. <laughs> very well done I uh, guess they didn't need your advice huh Dick I guess not <laughs> no, they Boy, did fine they stayed together what do you think Dolly <laughs> will say well, uh, I think um, I'm going to go along with uh, Steve. I think she would talk to a congresswoman because she is, uh, she really wants to become better informed. And, uh, you know, it's hard to, <laughs> if she, if she's talking to a call girl, she'll fall asleep because she doesn't like to lie down in the middle of the day. <laughs> so she would, she would definitely talk uh, to a congresswoman. Yeah. You feel reasonably certain of that, don't you? Oh, well, I, I, uh, well, not really. <laughs> Here she comes. Oh, yes. Dolly, which one would you like to talk to? The crung, uh, the Kolga. No, that's not the big <laughs> one. Why not? That long I reasoning answer and she's, boy, she snaps it back quick. No, I, thought, I thought you'd gotten over all that, so to speak. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. <laughs> uh, 
You swore it's... you weren't going to talk to your old friends again. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> now, now, ignore that if You're you can, get... darling. Give oh, us your reasoning here. Well, my reasoning is that the call girl that makes it, you know, uh, in Congress is someone I'd like to get to know because <laughs> there's many call girls, but someone that makes it into the... I'd like to know the inside scoop on who does what to whom. Doesn't matter Wait. how she gets it. Wait a minute. I, I'm not quite sure that's what we but had I in mind when we asked the question. But... <laughs> but yeah. oh. Famous call girl congresswoman is what you thought we were talking about. No, but I mean, this girl girl's in Congress, isn't she? No. She's, oh. in, she's in Washington, D.C., though. You're close. That's what I meant. Same party, right? <laughs> Same city, yes. Oh, now, there's nothing says she has to understand the question. No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> We're not grading on the end. It's not a snap quiz, you know what I mean. I'm sorry, Dolly, but I'll try to be clear next time, John. Oh. Who would Lynn rather talk to? Oh, that's funny. Well, um, I think Lynn would rather talk to Dolly after this. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Lynn is the sister who is couldn't be less interested in politics. I don't know why, but she is so Maybe because the other one is. in politics. She falls asleep like she did at the wheel of our car the other night. And... Oh. Um, uh -oh. uh, I'll tell you about that later. Yeah, uh, tell us now. We'd rather no. That's no, all right. No, no. Uh, and as for American, po I mean, English politics, she has trouble with American politics. She doesn't understand at all. Right. But she did play a hooker once in uh, the Happy Hooker. That's she right. sure did. Right. And she, she found wondering. out how to do that by talking to a lot of not Congress women. Believe me. Yes. So uh, uh, I have to say, she would rather talk to the hooker. The hooker. Yeah. The call girl. They, the they call, girl, call girls in Washington, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, well, Hookers everywhere else. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I think what we're talking about is an economic difference, I think. <laughs> Here comes Lynn now. <laughs> Lynn, which one would you rather talk to, the, uh, the congresswoman or the call girl? You know, I can't tell you how weird it is sitting back here. We've got this terrible music going in our ears, and the other two ladies who can hear what the, my spouse has just said are laughing and nodding and carrying on. <laughs> anyway. I've talked to a lot of call girls when I researched a character that I played called Xavier Hollander, but I haven't talked to a lot of congresswomen. And I think I'd say I'd talk to the congresswoman. Oh. That's, that's not what he said, I'm sorry. Steve and Edie get the whole thing for the blue section. Well, that's a good beginning, isn't it? For the blue section, anyway. We'll come back in just a moment after this session. Question number two coming up, guys. <laughs> Geico's always... Thank you. We are back. We were just having a little educational lesson from <laughs> Steve Lawrence on the... <laughs> and we're back with question number two, and it, once again, it is for the ladies. And, and Dolly, you and Lynn have to play catch-up to Steve and Edie. Oh. They, got all, they got 150 bucks right off the bat here. No. This one is worth 150 as well. Here you go. Ladies, you've hired the 14-year-old daughter of some close friends to babysit for you while you're on vacation. You come home a little early and find her smoking pot. Would you tell her parents yes or no? Okay, think that one over. Okay, that's kind of a, an mm. interesting, serious question. Dick, what would you, first of all, has ever happened to you? Uh, we don't have any children, so a babysitter would be superfluous. Yeah. <laughs> well, Probably, you might well. Uh, How old was she? Probably wouldn't need her. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could always start, you know. <laughs> well, I'd say that uh, Dolly would be very angry if it was her pot the kid was smoking. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff's expensive today. <laughs> that a front row of banana sauce and going, yeah, man, yeah. You betcha. Oh, good. <laughs> She definitely would not turn the kid. She wouldn't bust the kid, no. She would not? No. She would not tell the friends? Never. Okay, no, here no. she comes. Dolly, would you, uh, would you tell this girl's parents, yes or no? I'm not a snitch, no. That's what he said. You're right. But, but can I just say this? Um, I would never I'm hire her. I would, I would never hire her again. And I'd give her a good talking to. Yes. <laughs> I like the way you said that, though. I'm not a snitch. Not a snitch. Not a snitch. Not a snitch. Thank you, Dolly, so much. Uh, what will Lynn say? Well, we have three kids, uh, and one particularly a new one, so we are into babysitters again. Yes, you are. Um, and I think what would happen is that Lynn would talk a lot to this girl and try and find out why she's doing it and whether her parents know and so on. She definitely would not tell the child's parents, but I think she would try and 
talk her out of it or convert her. Talk, talk to the girl, but definitely. The girl. Yeah, the parents are friends. I don't want to color your answer at all, but they are, they they are friends. Different. They're not strangers to you. Right. Yeah, no, okay. but still not. She still would not. Here comes Lynn. Lynn, yeah. how do you feel about that? Would you tell, yes or no? That's tricky. First of all, I don't think I'd hire a 14-year-old while I was away on vacation, but uh, I'd be pretty shocked, and I would be pretty shocked if they, would, if they were drinking alcohol, too, and they were looking after my kids, and they were only 14. And I would like to think that somebody else would tell me if my 14-year-old were doing that while babysitting, and yes, I would tell them. Okay, that's not what John said. Ah. Uh. But I'll tell snitch. you... What did he yeah. say? Well, I'm married he said, to a snitch. Explain that to her, John, how you felt about it. Uh, well, what I said, sweetheart... Yes, darling. <laughs> um, what I said was I thought you would sit this person down and you would talk a lot and try and convert them and find out why they're doing it and get them to promise they'd never do it again. No, that's it's... what you'd do. Uh... You had to guess what I would do. I was going to go on to qualify it by saying that you would sit them down and talk to them. He would negotiate. <laughs> you wouldn't snitch. And I would snitch because I think I'd want to know if, if one of mine would, was... You know, you've yeah. changed a lot since we last did this. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's could, what I told you. What? This, that's could right. this be begin the beginning of the end no, of 15 not, years? No, not, not really. No, no, no trouble Darling, at all. Unless you this? miss the next one, then the red this? section will end it for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What was that? You were holding? I couldn't see you. I just you there. took off the wedding ring. Oh, no. It's the first do step. No, no, no. <laughs> Steve, what will Edie say? How, how does she feel well, about this? Well, I, I think Edie and I are uh, a little bit from the old school, you know, when it, when it comes to that kind of uh, subject matter. We, we're, you know, we're very square. Uh, we were invited to a pot party, and my wife brought along the Tupperware. You know, this is... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think that, that if... if uh, if a 14-year-old babysitter, if we, you know, caught that babysitter smoking a joint and, and they were friends of ours, I would think that if they were good enough friends that we could, could discuss it with them. And I, yes, I think I would tell them because I think uh, they should know what their children are doing and uh, what they're involved in. Right. So I, I think, yes, I would you, you, mention it to my friends. These are now friends. Now, wait, now remember, I'm asking Edie. Do you think she'll feel the same? I think she definitely will feel the same. Okay, let's bring her on. Here she comes. Edie. Yes. Would you tell your friends about the 14-year-old babysitter? This is a um, dilemma, this question, really, because, um, first of all, I would not want to be a snitch, nor would I want to be known as a snitch. On the other hand, if the parents were really close friends of mine, I'd have to think, well, is this going to upset these people to the point where uh, they will no longer be friendly with me? On the other hand, I have had problems with babysitters, and you have a small baby or a child to think about, and you would not want somebody that's uh, incapable of taking care of your child in your home. And uh, I feel that somebody, especially a 14-year-old, is not an adult, cannot handle uh, the ramifications of smoking pot. Is it a yes or a no? Uh, uh, as much as I would hate to snitch, considering that the child is 14, plus that she was babysitting or he was babysitting for my child. We're a little late, Edie. Uh... And parents were very close friends of mine. Unfortunately, I would have to say yes, I would say That's what the man said. You're absolutely right. Oh, you're right. right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's been 150 and a half, and it is halftime, gentlemen. Will you kindly step to the rear? We shall bring the ladies out front and come back with a second half of Tattletales after this message. They savages. Hello, we are back. We have changed places, as you can no doubt tell, because I have a much lovelier-looking panel out here. Oh, Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> you look lovelier. cute, too, though. This question, Hi. once again, is worth $150, <laughs> and it's for the fellas. You gotta play catch-up to Steve and Edie. They got most of the money. Men, in the middle of making love, which of you is more likely to start laughing? You or your wife? Uh -huh. Goodbye, guys. What a question. I love to see uh, their faces. You can't see them, but I uh, see no, them. No, you see their faces? It's absolutely perfect. Yes, they're gone now, however. Lynn, uh, oh my goodness. does that Stop ever uh, <laughs> does that ever happen uh, with, with between what you and John? I mean, we laugh a lot, actually. I've always <laughs> thought that it was one of God's greatest jokes that He invented. That that was the way that we all did it. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> I do tend, I do. I think it's so funny. You, you know, you see it on a movie. You know, I mean, you laugh. It's funny. You know, if, if sometimes I think of seeing myself. I think how funny I must look. Well, <laughs> he must look even funnier. But anyway, I also cry a lot. I'm a great crier. Oh, my goodness, but I do laugh. Now, who would laugh first? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Which of you is more likely to more start likely laughing? More likely to so laugh that, well, first. It is I think first. possibly, oh, dear, I'm bound to get this wrong. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, let's say that he would. He would be most likely to start. 
Laughing first. Yeah, first. I hope he says that. I, he... Oh, I hope he does. Well, wait a minute. You know, it doesn't say start laughing first, but it oh. really implies that. Which one of you is more, more like, most likely to start, more likely to start laughing? So that means yeah, first. Yeah, I'll say him. Okay, here he oh, comes. Oh, dear. Please. Which one of you, John? Which will it be? Well, it depends which TV show we're watching, I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> However, you, you do say uh, that one of, one of us is going to do it. So assuming one of us is going to do it... Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, I'll say that I'm more... That's the one. You've redeemed yourself, sir. The red section is back in business. Thank you, John. Uh, you're the front runners, uh, Edie, but they're closing in on you now. I know. Which one? And you two are you're both so funny. Uh, well, humorous and sense of humor plays a big part in both your lives. Absolutely. So much so that uh, <laughs> I never knew how I was going to tell my children about the birds and the bees because it has always been such a funny thing to me. I mean, I can't tell you. I think it's very uh, exciting, but I think that sex is also terribly amusing. Yes. Also, I, Steve is so funny anyway. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I have to tell you, we laugh a lot more than anything else. Uh, but, <laughs> um, which I think is why we've been married 24 years. Yes, probably. Uh, a lot of laughing going on. Uh, I'll say, only since it's 50-50, I'm going to take a chance and say it's me. Okay. I laugh at him. You're most like, likely. I love it when you laugh. Here he comes. Because I laugh. Steve, yes. <clears throat> which of you is more likely to start laughing? Uh, I think that uh, between the two of us, I think Edie is the most serious of the two. I have always... I have always thought that the naked body, I've always found it very amusing. Yeah. So, I mean, aside from being lovely to look at, there are certain things that just make me laugh, and the naked body is one of them. I, I think that I probably would uh, uh, wind up laughing uh, or amused by it before Edie. Oh. You're wrong. <laughs> That's uh, not what she said. Ah. Did you get that early buzz in there? I think well, I mean, Edie always laughs at everything I do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which is one of the reasons we only have two children. <laughs> I... I'm sorry, Steve. Uh, I think we felt that we had the correct answer from you in the beginning there, and what we were was the right. Answer? The answer was that Edie stops, does first, and he said that. Um, no, he no, said. That, that, I think what he said was what that did he, he say? would laugh. Is, first. He, he, what he said that is that I would laugh. That first. you would laugh first. Yes. And Edie said she would laugh first. You still Well, laugh. he who laughs laughs. <laughs> Sometimes laughs all. Yeah, here we Boo. go, Dolly. <laughs> anyway, you're wrong, Dolly. What's the answer? Well, this is going to be, I think, easy. Of course, we don't know how old Tricky's going to answer this, but um, he finds no humor at all in sex. <laughs> What does he find, I guess? I gotta tell you, I have found this out to my embarrassment because I've laughed and he has totally been turned off. Oh. And he said, it's not funny, Dolly. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna definitely say it's me. Okay, you're the one. Here he comes. <laughs> Dick, well, this is very important, this question right here for you. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I would say definitely Dolly would start. <laughs> That's the one. You're right. Dick and Dolly are right. Lynn and John are right. They split it in the half. And we'll come back in just a moment and split our last one for you. And it's worth 300 bucks. Don't go away. Point to get Point to On. And we got to go quick. This one. We are back, and we got to go quick. This one's worth 300 bucks, and we're real short on time, guys. Here it comes. It's for you. Did you give any Christmas presents to anyone that you do not like? Yes or no? Off you go. Good question. Your basic uh, integrity question, I guess, but not really. Uh, what do you think John will say, Lynn? Uh, no, I think he'll say no. I think he, but, um, he, he didn't, no. No, the no. answer is no. No, the he answer is no. Okay, here he goes. Only to those he loved. John, did you give a Christmas present to anyone that you do not like? Well, I have a lot of sentimental attachment to giving presents, and so I don't want to make a mockery of it, and I have to say, no, I That's did not. right. That's what the lady said. Okay. At the moment, you're in real good shape. Thank you, John. We come to you, Dolly. We're working our way up because Steve and Edie are in the lead. Um, in the past, we, we have, yes, guilt. Um, but we started a whole new thing, Christmas and everything. 
no, he, he says bah humbug. Mm -hmm. Bah humbug. Right. I know, because I didn't get anything from you this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he'll say no. Here he comes. Dick, what's the answer? Did you give a present? Absolutely not. That's right. Yeah! That's what the lady said. So now we got... This, this will decide the game, because they're tied with you at the moment. If you get it, you win the game for the blue section, Edie. No pressure, of course, intended. No. The answer is no. You didn't. No. That's right. I didn't get one from you either. <laughs> okay, here comes Steve and Edie. I mean, Steve. Ah. Hello, Steve. Yes. Hello. Edie's already here. Ah. Well, what is the answer? For the game, by the way, did you give a present to anyone that you did not like this Christmas? Well, it's not a question of like or not like. There are some people that you don't like as well. Ah. I think that, yes, uh... We, we... No, that's not what the lady said. Dick and Dolly and Lynn and John split the money, split the $300, the time is up, and the banana section wins it. And we'll come back in just a moment and dole out some more money. Don't go away. See you in a second. Hey, your favorite show on the game show? How much money did the we The banana section won it today with $300. We had 1000 They will divide $1,300. Not bad, gang. Thank you. Thank you all for watching this bird comedy saying so long. See you next time. Bye. In addition to cash... Meet Barney. Barney likes to run out on his bill at restaurants. And then there's Aaron. Aaron steals Halloween candy from little children. Who's going to trust them? Hey, 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 Come on, kitten. Find out on Friend or Foe, weeknights at 10.30, only on Game Show Network. Because of the scrub air filter, the Remington air purifier for cleaner, fresher air. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Tattletail. A Mark Woodson, Bill Totman production. The program was edited for broadcast. Weekday mornings is Wake Up to the bright, fun way to start out the day for the whole family. So rise and shine to Wake Up weekday mornings at 7. Then stay tuned for 90 minutes of news on morning. This is CBS. Okay, I'll, I'll put some dark furniture polish on the guitar scratch ad. Nobody will notice it. Okay. Look, I know it's been rough on you guys since Dad left, but it's been rough on me, too. You know, I think maybe if we just tried to take it a little easier on each other for right now, it'd be better, okay? Okay. When is he coming home, Mom? I don't know. I know he loves you. You're going to see him, aren't you? I guess so. We'll be okay, Mom. I know. I know it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Eat your food, please. <laughs> 